So images of jubilation pouring in following the initial release of hostages amid the four-day truce. Israelis gathered at the Hostages Square, which is outside the Art Museum in Tel Aviv, as the first group of Israeli hostages safely returned after being held in Gaza for weeks. And Palestinians celebrated in the streets of the West Bank as 39 Palestinian prisoners, 24 women and 15 children were released from jails in Israel on Friday as well. Joining me now, David Rode, NBC News senior executive editor. He's a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner who himself was taken hostage by the Taliban in 2008 and managed to escape. David, it's good to have you here. I wanted to get your reaction to the first release of those 24 hostages, which included 13 Israelis yesterday, freed from Gaza. Um, what does this deal signify to you in terms of where we are in the progression of the war itself? Um, I, I think it's a pause. I, uh, it's a joyous moment um, for these families. Uh, as a former hostage, I couldn't be happier for the captives themselves and their families. But I, I think there are longer-term challenges ahead. I think that uh, one major issue is that, um, as Kier noted, there were these painstaking negotiations that went on. Throughout them, Hamas has said that they only control about 120 of the 240 people that are believed to be kidnapped. Um, Hamas is claiming that many civilians streamed into Israel after Hamas fighters broached the Israeli border wall, and that many civilians and other groups, potentially Islamic Jihad, grabbed Israeli captives as well. This entire situation, though, is a responsibility of Hamas. But so th that's the challenge. What happens after these four days? What happens when Hamas says we don't, we sort of don't have more uh, women and children to release? Uh, that's the real question: is is how this gets extended. You know, David, yesterday, President Biden making some comments from Nantucket, and he said that, quote, we need to renew our resolve to pursue the two-state solution where Israelis and Palestinians can one day live side by side in a two-state solution with equal measure of freedom and dignity. Reporting has been clear that President Biden played a key role in getting this negotiated deal done, pressuring Netanyahu and others to make sure that the hostages could start to come home. I mean, the messaging that we're hearing from President Biden, do you think that that's going to facilitate maybe finding a two-state solution somewhere down the road? The response so far, at least from Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, is no. Um, it, for a long term, Netanyahu has opposed the two-state solution. Um, his, uh, he's now in a unity government, which includes the Israeli opposition. But prior to this, he was in a government that consisted of several far-right Israeli parties that also opposed the two-state solution. So this is a great question and a great thing you're pointing out. This gets back to what is the long-term solution here. So there has been very aggressive support from President Biden uh, towards Israel. Um, that's upset some some Democrats, um, and and yet there is this looming gulf between the Biden administration and Netanyahu in terms of a two-state solution. Netanyahu's also talked about keeping Israeli forces in Gaza. He's talked about permanent military buffer zones being established in Gaza. And the issue there is that Palestinians will see this as Israel sort of seizing more Palestinian territory. Um, many Palestinians and, and people in the region see the, this whole effort as an attempt to push Palestinians out of Gaza and Israel to take control of that territory. Israel's made it clear, though, David, that it doesn't have an interest in occupying Gaza, that they just want to make sure that they have a security presence to be able to safeguard the interests and the, the lives of Israelis. But let's be clear, that region, it's not just what's happening right now between Israel and Hamas. I mean, you've got Lebanon in the north. You've got the, 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 the military interactions that are happening there. I mean, the concern that I have, and I think others have, is this ceasefire, if it's one of, of several that may occur. Um, allows Hamas, a known terrorist organization, to be able to regroup and maybe get aid from Iran, for example, which then further complicates the, the region's kind of, uh, you know, dynamics. So how much does a third-party actor like Iran play into what's happening right now? Uh, Iran is a very destructive force. They, you know, there are reports that they helped some of the Hamas fighters train for this attack. They Hamas exists largely because of Iran, Iranian funding and, and weaponry, so you're exactly right. right. The issue is, in the long term, the stability of the region, you know, according to the Abide administration, involves some form of Palestinian self-government. The Palestinian Authority, which is a rival of Hamas, has huge problems with corruption, but at least the Palestinian Authority has sort of renounced terrorism at this point. And so they are seen in American eyes, I think, in the eyes of the administration as a, an, as a possible partner. 
the Palestinian Authority sort of rules over the West Bank. They lost an election back in 2006 to Hamas. There have been, in Gaza, there have been no elections since then. So simply put, you know, are there Palestinian partners? Are there, is there someone, you know, some party or force that would establish a two-state solution that would respect Israel's security? The Palestinian Authority, you know, say they are willing to do that. But talks have been stalled now for, for many, many years. And again, there's been opposition from the Israeli right and from Netanyahu to a two-state solution. David, I want to—an understanding that everybody's experiences can be unique, especially the trauma of being held as a hostage. I want to lean into your personal experiences just for a minute and ask you about the what, what it's going to be like for the hostages that have been released, that have been, you know, sent back to Israel yesterday, not all of whom were Israelis. And I had a, the family member of, of a, a man and his wife who were taken hostage or believed to be taken hostage by Hamas at last hour. And putting aside just how personal this is and how, how much anguish these family members are going through, the people themselves, like you, what is it like for when you come back? Um, it's it's pure joy in the beginning. It's just incredible. You you feel terrible. You know you worry about your own you know survival, um, and and you also worry about your family. They're worried about you you know an incredible amount. So they're elated when they come home. And I just want to state there are ten American citizens uh, still being held. Um, mm -hmm. You know we don't know if they're going to come out today. We don't know if they're going to come out in the next few days. That's a huge hope of the Biden administration and those families. Um, Abigail Idan, an American citizen who turned four years old yesterday, is one of the captives. I pray she comes out. <clears throat> excuse me, in the days ahead. And so it's it's a it's a joyous moment for the hostages. There's a transition in the long term where you're you know you're 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 so happy to be home, and then it's sort of what do you do. You know, with your life now. So, you know, you, it's overwhelming. You make this transition. You get tremendous support from your family and friends. And you move on with your life because you, you sort of don't want the kidnapping to define you. It's something you didn't control. So they will come back. They will be overjoyed. They will struggle potentially for, for a period, but they will recover from this. And um, I'm just praying that more of them come home. As we all are. David Rood, as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate it.